Okay, guys, so this is topic eight, part two, and force mass momentum. So let me see, we have a couple of questions to do here. So this is going to be very, very question heavy. Um, so I would advise watching part one, otherwise you're going to be completely lost. No, screen record and save the videos. That's fantastic. And um, so lots of questions here. Um, think about physics guys answering questions is kind of the, really the only way to do it. Um, you know, practice makes perfect with physics. Um, especially when you answer the questions, you begin to realize that it's not that difficult. It's the same thing over and over and over again. As the, the thing with physics is you can't learn it off, just understand it. If, once you understand what all the symbols mean and how the equations are formed, all of a sudden everything starts to just kind of fit into place, okay? All right, so we will start here with problem four. If you're looking on the notes, it's page five of the notes. So a car of mass 725 kgs is traveling along a straight road all right, so let me write all that out. So again, write everything out on the left-hand side. So a car of mass 725 kgs. It's traveling along a straight level road at a uniform speed of 30 meters per second. If total resistance to its motion is 600, what is the driving force due to the engine? And give a reason for your answer. What is the least time to take the car to reach velocity? 100 starts from rest. Okay, so I'm just going to make it u 30 meters per second. If the total resistance to its motion, so F, and I'm going to give a little R, Newtons, what is the driving force due to the engine? So what is F D it equals just F? Give a reason for your answer. Okay. Um, now there's no maths here, so all right. So the answer to the first one there is right. we're driving at a uniform speed, which means u equals v, which means we're not accelerating. Okay, so a equals zero there. That's what I was kind of looking at. It. I was like, are we speed number slowing down? But uniform speed means v equals u. That's why I just gave it a u, uh, which means a is equal to zero, and the resistance is six hundred newtons. So what is the driving force to do to the engine? So therefore, F D, the driving force would simply be 600 newtons. Now, why? I'm not going to write out the, the answer, I'm just going to say it. The reason why, guys, is um, if you're accelerating, all right, if you're accelerating, that means the driving force of the engine is greater than the resistance, so you're speeding up. If you're decelerating, that means the resistance is greater than the driving force of the engine, so you're slowing down. That's how you speed up and slow down. You speed up because you're able to overcome resistance. You slow down because you're unable to overcome resistance. You speed up, you speed slow down. Okay, that's why. Therefore, if you're driving at a constant speed, you're not accelerating. If you're not accelerating, then that means your resistance is not greater than your driving force. Your driving force is not greater than your resistance, so therefore they have to be the same. And there you go. If the engine is capable of exerting a force of 1,000 newtons, what is the least time it would take the car to reach a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour if it starts from rest and the force remains the same? All right, okay, so rub out my left-hand side here. I've got to redo that. All right. So the mass is the same. Uh, the driving force, I'm just going to call FD, is 1,000 newtons. The resistance, FR, is still 600. Um, so what's F going to be? What's the force of motion then? If the driving force is 1,000 and the resistance is 600, it's gonna be 400, isn't it? Okay. So, uh, velocity, so initial is U is zero. That's meant to be a U. I don't know what the hell it is, but it was meant to be a U. So what's gonna be V, so 100 kilometers per hour. You need to know how to convert that to meters per second because distance has to be in meters, time has to be in seconds. So another way to look at this is it's 100 kilometers over an hour. How do you convert kilometers to meters? You multiply by 1,000. How do you convert hours into seconds? Well, 60 by 60, and there you go. 
It never changes. Okay? It never changes. So, if you have kilometers per hour, you multiply the number by 1,000 to convert that kilometers to meters. You divide it by 60 by 60 to convert that hours to minutes. So your 100 kilometers per hour should work out to be, now again, do your maths and leave a comment below if I did this wrong, but I think it's correct, 27 point, and I rounded it up to three decimal places, 778 meters per second to the minus one, okay? That's how you always change this, okay? All right, rub all that out. Now, uh, where are we? What are we looking for, actually? I never even looked at that question. Time. All right, so we're looking for time, T. It'd be important if I actually took note of that at the start. T equals T, so I need to find time. All right, so we need to find time. Do I have an equation with one missing value? All right, so one thing we don't have is S. We don't have the distance. So realistically, we can ignore the equation s equals ut plus a half in t squared, and v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We can ignore that because we don't have s, right? But we do have v equals u plus a t, okay? So we need to find a then. But actually, another way to look at it. Let's say you didn't know that, right? Let's say you were like, what can I do? Go to your log tables. Is there an equation there that's missing one value? There is. There is, it's missing. We have M, we have F. So A equals F over M. We said F is 400, M is 725. So our acceleration here, I worked it out to be, where is it now? 0 0.5517. Now is there another equation missing one value? There is. V equals U plus AT, right? That's one way to do it. The other way was the other way I was telling you. We don't have S, so we have, we have to ignore V equals U squared. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. We have to ignore that equation. S equals UT plus half of T squared. We have to ignore that one because we don't have S. We don't know the distance it traveled. Therefore, all we have left is V equals U plus AT. So we have to find A, and then you do it that way. So there's two different ways to approach this question. So rearrange this. T equals V minus U over A. Sub in your values, and we should end up with 50.35 seconds. And there you go. So it takes 50.35 seconds to get up from rest up to that. Okay. Problem five. Again, this is a long... Oh, now, this question here, um, I'll do a little bit extra. I'm going to talk about this. So what you have here is you have... All right, you have a cable and you have something in the cable, so we'll call that 200 kg, so whatever. Um, so you have two things working. You have the tension of the cable, T, and you have the weight of the object, W, which is, of course, mg, okay? So there are the two things. You have a tension of a cable pulling up and you have the weight of the object pulling down, okay? So if it goes up, what would that mean? That means tension would have to be greater. Tension would have to be greater than weight. If tension is greater than weight, it's going to pull that up, isn't it? And of course, therefore, down, it's going down, weight is greater than tension. Yeah? Think about it. All right? If a machine moves up, then the tension has to be greater than the weight. Okay? If the machine moves down, then the weight has to be greater than the tension. Okay, so therefore the resultant force F, okay, for going up, right, means F would equal T minus W, okay? Why T minus W? Because T is greater than W. If T is greater than W, all right, then the thing is going to move up, all right? So the resultant force up is that resultant F down W minus T. Why? Because W is greater than T. So if it's going up, tension is greater than weight. So tension minus weight equals the force. If it's going down, the weight is greater than the tension. So weight minus tension equals the force. And that's it.
Okay. Let me see now. Um, the question. So that's kind of that's kind of the general idea. That's how you answer all of these. I'm gonna rub this all out, and then we'll answer the questions. Oops. Right. So an object of mass two thousand kgs has been lowered from the top of a building. Okay, so mass is being lowered from the top of a building by means of a metal cable. Find the tension if the object is being lowered at a constant velocity. Okay, so constant, what do we say about constant? A equals zero. Okay, and it's being lowered. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if it's been lowered, then that means T is greater than W. So F equals T minus W. Now, because A equals zero, F equals MA, which equals zero. So therefore, T minus W equals zero. Therefore, T equals W. The tension equals the weight. Okay? The tension equals the weight. What did we say weight was? Weight is mass times gravity. So tension equals 2,000 times 9.8. So the tension in the cable is 19,600 newtons. Do you see that? Constant speed means A equals zero. Therefore, F equals MA equals zero. So therefore, T minus W equals zero. So the tension equals the weight. And the weight is mass times gravity. The mistake people make there is they say tension equals weight. I can't solve it from here. Don't forget, weight is mass times gravity, not 2,000 kgs. Okay, that's the first part there. Now, again, if you messed up and you had weight minus tension. Oh, okay. So, um, I should give a seizure warning in front of that. Um, so if you said weight minus tension, you still would have worked out in the end. But I, I like to do it correct the whole time. Okay, just in case the market scheme is a bit tighter now. All right, so an object, or the same object, okay, so 2,000 kg has been lowered downward with an acceleration this time. Okay, so now it's been lowered. Oh, I made a mistake the last time, actually, hold on a minute. So it's been lowered, ah, sorry, I made a mistake. I said it was being raised. It's been lowered, so weight was bigger than tension. So that should have been, in the previous question, W minus T, so I would have lost marks. So the previous question, I don't know why I said it was going up. It should have been W minus T equals F. It still works out the same, W equals T, okay? So it actually didn't make much difference. It would, it, it would have worked out in the end, but I would have lost marks because of this part here. I said F equals T minus W, okay? Which is incorrect, we're going down should be the other way around, W minus T. Okay, so just be aware of that. I, made, I misread that question there. Um, what happened there, guys, is because I was trying to find the tension, I didn't read the question, and I've been lost marks. Okay, so the object's been lowered with a downward acceleration of two meters per second, okay? So therefore, again, lowered means W is greater than T, so F equals W minus T. This time, F equals MA, which is 2,000 times two, so 4,000 equals now we got the weight in the previous question one nine six zero zero minus t so minus t equals minus fifteen thousand six hundred t equals fifteen thousand six hundred newtons and there you go okay so if we're being lowered at two meters per second acceleration that means the tension is only fifteen thousand six hundred so there you go, okay? So I made a mistake in the first one because I didn't read the question. So let that be a lesson to you. Always read a question. Okay, so I have three questions left and then we're done with this topic. And then I just do pressure, which I'll put up in the next couple of days, okay? So let me see. Okay, so pressure is a horrible one. That'll have probably it'll possibly be three videos. Okay, so the principle of conservation of momentum, all right? So what this is, is that in a collision between two objects, the momentum before is the exact same as the momentum after. 
provided, and this is key for your definition, guys, no external forces act in the system, okay? If you forget to state that, you're wrong, all right? Because obviously, in a, say, if there's a car crash, two cars hit each other, okay? The momentum before is not the same as the momentum after. Why? The tires are touching the road, so there's friction. The wind is there, and the wind is, of course, blowing in and changing it as well. And then, of course, energy is lost through sound and heat, okay? Now, if all of those things are negated, the momentum before and the momentum after would be the exact same. But we live on a planet where there are external factors, so therefore, it won't be. But if you were in space, you would see the momentum being the same, okay? So you have to include no external forces. That's where this equation comes from. Um, M1, U1 plus M2, U2 equals M1, V1 plus M2, V2, okay? That's where it comes from. Now, this equation down here is not in the log tables. All it is, all right, if the two objects, so let's say, for example, this one up here, we start this way, all right? The top one is if you have one object, you have two objects, and they hit each other, and then after collision, they move off in opposite directions. We use this equation. Why? Because that's V1, that's V2, U1, U2, okay? They move off in opposite directions. Now, for this equation, okay, we have object one, object two, and they hit each other, U1, U2. After they hit each other, they collide and stick together, and they move off in a V, all right? So basically what we're saying is V1 equals V2. So these two are the same. So we can simply pull them outside and get this. You see? Just makes it a little bit easier. It's not in the log tables. You don't have to do it. You can still put in your V values for both of them, but this just makes it that bit easier to do, okay? All right. So again, with all these questions, we'll answer a few questions. Uh, one, two, three, four. They're fairly straightforward, guys, these questions. This, again, listing your values correctly on the left-hand side makes life a lot easier. So what is the momentum of the car? Find momentum if the mass is 800 kgs and the speed is 20. So MV, uh, so that's simply going to be 16,000. What is the SA uniform momentum? Look at the equation, mv. m is kg, that's meters per second. So kgs, meters per second to the minus one, okay? All right, now we get into the nitty gritty of it. A car of mass, 800 kgs. So label everything and make sure your labels are correct when you do it, otherwise you're gonna get everything wrong. So m1, 800, kgs. Moving at 20 meters per second, U1, 20 meters per second. Collides with another car, M2, of 1500 kg, which is at rest, U1, U2, zero. The both cars stick together, so we're just gonna find V. Find our velocity, so M1, U1, plus M2, U2, equals M1 plus M2 V. Okay? Now, I'm just going to, just to save time, um, instead of writing out all the numbers again, V is equal to M1 U1 plus M2 U2 all over M1 plus M2. This is what I like to do. I like to just bring it all over into one side, make the thing I'm looking for the subject, and then I put in my values. So when you put in all your values for this, guys, you should end up with 6.96 meters per second to the minus one. Okay? All right. So, let's roll this up. So, uh, 100 kg block. So that's M1. It doesn't matter what you call M1 or M2, guys. Why don't you just keep the, the same numbers? Uh, like, for example, if M1 is moving at 10, make sure you make 10 U1. 10 meters per second, U1, 10, um, with a 60 kg block, M2, 60, moving in the opposite direction at 15 meters per second, so U2, now they know it, they said opposite direction, minus 15, after the collision, 
the 60 kg block initially moves with a speed of 8 meters per second in the opposite direction. So V1 minus 8 uh, to its original velocity. If no external force acts in the system, find the velocity of the 100 kg block. Oh, sorry, the 60 kg block. That's not V1. The 60 kg block, I made M2. So V2 is going to be 8. Now, why am I making V2 8? Well, it says here, it moves in the in after collision in the opposite direction. Well, its original direction, I said, was minus. So therefore, it goes the opposite to minus is plus. We're looking for V1 equals V. So again, okay, so I'm going to roll this down because this screen, if I touch it with my hand, it goes bananas. M1, U1, M2, U2 equals M1. V1 plus M2 V2. Okay. Now, all right, I'm just going to have to put in all my values in this one. So this is, I'm going to have to maybe rub this out and back again. So that's going to be 100 times 10, which is 1,000, plus M2, which is 60, times minus 15, makes that. Okay. Why did that turn off? minus 900 we don't have v1 so that's going to become 100 just v because i said down here v1 equals v and m2 which is 60 times 8 which is going to give me 480 so i'm going to bring everything over to one side and leave my 100 v on the other so 100 v is therefore equal to 1000 minus 900 is 100 minus 480 so therefore, V, so that's going to be 380 divided by 100. That's going to be a minus. So V equals minus 3.8 meters per second to the minus 1. Now, what does that mean? That means it goes 3.8 meters per second opposite in the opposite direction, DIR to original, um, what do I say, original direction. There you go. So after this collision, the 100 kg block moves in the opposite direction. It was originally moving in the plus direction. Now it's minus, so it's gone in the opposite. That's it, okay? All right, so the last question here now, and then we're done. Let me see now. So a bullet of mass, 12 grams, Okay, so this one is very tricky. All right, so a bullet of mass 12 grams. So 12 grams is going to be 12 by 10 to the minus 3 kgs, traveling at U1, 200 to the minus 1, enters a block of wood, which is at rest. So U2 equals 0. It enters from the other side at a speed of meters, da, 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 the block, so there we go, that's what I'm looking for, M2 equals 10. All right, so uh, where was it? It emerges from the other side at a speed, so the bullet is V1, 50 meters per second to minus 1. If the block is 10, find the velocity it acquires, so we're looking for V2. I'm just going to call that V. Assume the mass of the block remains unchanged. Verify that the force exerted on the block and the bullet, and the force exerted on the block, on the by the block and the bullet, and on the block by the bullet are the same. Okay, so we need to find V first. So M1 U1 plus M2 U2 equals M1 V1 M2 V2 or V2, which is just going to be V. So. M1 is 12 by 10 to the minus 3, U1 is 200, so that should be 2.4, plus 0, because the initial velocity of the block is 0, plus, let me see, uh, the block bullet is 12 by 50, 0 0.6, plus block is 10, I'm going to call that 10V, so 10V equals 1.8, V equals 0 
in meters per second. So the velocity of the block goes from zero to 0 0.18 meters per second, okay? All right, that's the end of that. That's part one done. Now, the next question. Verify that the force exerted by the block on the bullet and the force by the block on the bullet and on the block by the bullet are the same. Okay. So. F equals MV minus MU over T. Okay. Because force is the change in momentum divided by time. That's all, all right? Now, another way to do this, um, some people are asking, you could, uh, looking for F equals MA. So you have F equals MA, what is A? So you find A first, okay? Um, so you could get A for the force exerted on the bullet first, all right? So what's the, how does the acceleration of the bullet change? Well, it changes from 200 meters per second down to 50 meters per second, so that'd be uh, 200 minus 50 divided by 0 0.002. That gives you your deceleration of the bullet. Slot it into F equals MA and you're done. Okay? And then you do the same for the block. Or you can do it this way. As I said, I'm going to do it this way because it's just that bit easier. But you can do it either way. It should get you the same answer. Okay? So for the bullet. Okay? So for the bullet. Uh, F equals 12 by 10 to the minus three times in final speed of 50 minus 12, 10 to the minus three, final initial speed of 200 all over 0 0.002. And that should give me a force of minus 900 newtons. So F of the bullet minus 900, okay? So the bullet got me minus 900, all right, so. Now we'll do the block. The mass is 10. Its final speed was 0 0.18. Its mass is 10 and its initial speed was 0. And the change was 0 0.002. So the force equals 900 newtons. Okay. Ah, so therefore, um, 900 equals 900. Therefore, same magnitude there you go that's it done okay so that was a lot shorter and simpler again as i said if you wished you could have said all right so i'll show you the other way oh why did that go away there all right so I, if all right so this has stopped working there we go we're back okay so i'll show you the other way there quick because this that's basically the end of the topic the topic is finished all right the other way you could have done it is you would have said F equals MA, you find the bullet first. A equals V minus U over T. A equals U, which was V, which was 50 minus 200 over 0 0.002. You would find that, you would slot it in up here, and your answer would be 900 minus. That's it, okay? You do the same for the block. That's what I mean. It's extra steps, a bit longer, but you get the same answer regardless. Okay. That is the end of force mass momentum, okay? Any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll move on to topic nine next. All the best.